Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the ozone layer and specifically discuss some of the findings from the last few years, talk about the ozone holes and basically how we study it using various satellites. Anyway, welcome to What The Mad. So we're actually going to be using this amazing free tool from NASA called Eyes on the Earth. And this is uh, the satellite or one of the media satellites that study the ozone layer even today. And this, this particular spacecraft is called Aura. Now, uh, what Aura does is basically it studies the upper atmosphere um, around our planet and kind of delivers the data to NASA to then process it and so on. And in uh, Eyes on the Earth, you can actually even compare the size of this thing to a scientist or a school bus, because why wouldn't you want to do that? So it's a pretty big satellite. Anyway, that's not why we're here. We're here, uh, our mission here is to basically go and take a look at the ozone layer. So we're actually going to be only looking at the ozone layer. And this is what it actually looks like right now. Now, just to give you an idea of what these colors mean, red means good. It means the ozone is very, very high there. Blue means bad, means the ozone is relatively low. Now, for the most part, none of this is dark blue, which is when you would experience what's known as here actually there's some dark blue here in, the, in antarctica this would be an ozone hole so there's one here and there's one here however if you go a little bit more north specifically a little bit south of australia and a little, i guess where new zealand is this is a huge amount of ozone right there now this is just like the current data you can actually take a look at uh, the data from I'm, I'm recording this in the um, in august of 2017 so you can take a look at august to september and here we can submit the dates and it basically starts playing it as a kind of an animation you can get to see that ozone is not actually just you know static thing that sits there it actually moves around and specifically here it moves around quite a lot and circulates around the planet now what exactly is ozone let's just briefly talk about the chemistry behind it ozone is uh, an oxygen molecule that has three oxygens in it Normal oxygen, the one that we breathe, has two atoms of oxygen. Ozone has three. The way it happens is if um, ultraviolet light strikes uh, ozone, the oxygen molecule separates into atoms and then combines into a triple oxygen. And this is what we call ozone. And this part here, every time it receives an ultraviolet light again, it actually can be separate into one atom that then reconnects to another oxygen. And this process kind of is circulated. It's basically uh, circular, so it um, happens over and over again. And, and it's a relatively fast process, but this process, uh, the process of creation of ozone from oxygen is relatively slow. So if you lose an ozone um, molecule, it will be hard to replenish it. Now, the reason why ozone is important is because it's actually really good at receiving the ultraviolet radiation and basically then uh, circulating like this and thus protecting our planet Earth uh, from the relatively dangerous ozone, uh, not ozone, sorry, ultra, ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light is actually pretty dangerous. It can damage cells quite easily. It obviously also causes um, things like sunburns, but is uh, responsible for producing some serious uh, damage and some serious problems for a life on Earth. So having ozone is very, very important. Now, scientists predicted that the way things were going with uh, our production of various chemicals on Earth, uh, if we hadn't stopped it by 2020, 2040, and then 2060, there would be practically no ozone left at all. The ozone layer would have been actually completely gone. This is due to um, the production of various things, including so-called CFCs and uh, nitrogen-based compounds um, that can break down ozone pretty quickly. Now, let's go back to that previous picture. So here, what, for example, a CFC does, and CFC is actually something that we used to use in aerosol sprays and um, is also uh, used in refrigeration and um, air conditioners. Uh, basically, CFCs accelerate the process of breaking down ozone to the point where one single molecule of a CFC can actually break down 100,000 molecules of um, ozone and thus increasing this process, but this process is not affected. So as the breakdown of ozone increases, the creation of new ozone is not affected. And so that can potentially 
result in something like this an ozone hole and this is actually why these stars forming and we detected them back in the 70s and officially published several important papers back in 1985 and by then uh people around the planet started talking about finding a way to prevent this from happening because there was actually a big ozone hole in the antarctica a smaller one in the arctic and australia started to get its effects um, basically, there was a big ozone hole uh, above Australian continent at some point, and that really freaked out a lot of people. And so because of that, people started to uh, propose different solutions, and one of the major solutions was a complete ban on CFCs, and production of CFCs is now forbidden. You can only reuse old ones, you're not allowed to make any new ones, and all of the 197 countries agreed to that. Um, I believe back in the 90s and it's known as the montreal protocol and so all of the countries are technically have signed this and are not supposed to be using the cfcs but as you can imagine you can't really control it and so some people still in some countries still use it quite quite a lot uh, another major discovery is that there's actually other compounds that can break down ozone and we'll talk about this in a few seconds but um let's just briefly discuss uh how much of ozone is there and how do we measure it so right here you might see there's something called dobson units and dobson is actually the person responsible for finding a way to um basically detecting ozone and calculating the amount of ozone in the atmosphere and he was also responsible for a lot of math behind it and so D dobson scale today today is what we use to measure ozone layer between 300 to 500 is actually normal level anything below 300 so basically the blue here is when it starts being dangerous and so if you see red that's really good if you see green and yellow that's good if you see blue that's not good now ozone also depends on the location and on the season so normally the uh, equatorial region doesn't have much ozone so no matter what happens on the planet there's usually less ozone here because most of it is created here and is then transported to the polar regions via uh, air circulation. So here you would expect a lot of ozone and here you would expect a lot of ozone. But as you can see, Antarctica and Arctic regions have now started losing those uh, ozone molecules due to various uh, chemicals that we release as, as humans. But interestingly, if you were to combine the entire ozone uh, from this region, for example, and combine it into like uh, an actual layer of atmosphere it would very it would be very very thin it would only be about three millimeters or like two pennies put together so it'd be super 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 small in other words uh there isn't that much ozone to begin with so we have to be really careful with it and because most of it is at an altitude of about 20 to 30 kilometers and because it's kind of difficult to basically control it and to protect it, uh, we have to be very careful with what kind of chemicals we release into the atmosphere. Now, I also mentioned that ozone is seasonal and usually here it's actually thicker during spring and thinner during uh, fall. So right now it's kind of fall-ish, so it would be thinner. But if I were to change this to springtime, like for example, that would be, I guess, March to let's just say April you would see that the amount of reds and oranges is a lot a lot higher so maybe not in the southern hemisphere this oh, just a little bit of it but in the northern hemisphere there's quite a lot of ozone circulating pretty much covering the entire Europe and Asia and North America so all in all it's a, it's a pretty interesting pretty dynamic sort of uh, thing going on but it's also very 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 um, sensitive to human activity now one thing I wanted to mention is that even though CFCs have been banned, there's quite a lot of other components and chemicals we've discovered that actually can basically break down ozone. And so some of them are nitrous in, uh, in origin. So nitrous oxide is one, nitric oxide, um, hydroxyl um, molecules, also cl various chlorides and bromides. A lot of this stuff we actually use quite actively even today. And specifically one I wanted to mention is nitrous oxide. It's commonly known as the laughing gas and you may have actually seen or even used it before it's the one that kind of makes your voice funny and it's been used by dentists uh, dentists around the world to kind of anesthetize you before a serious surgery uh, so you know maybe a dentist might cure one hole a cavity hole in your tooth but by using the actual nitrous oxide he's created another hole a ozone hole in the atmosphere but uh, the idea here is that even though um, technically nitrous oxide is actually allowed worldwide and even the WHO the World Health Organization 
has actually recently listed it as essential medicine, the most effective and safe medicine needed in health systems around the world. Uh, it is unfortunately extremely, extremely potent at doing this part, breaking down the ozone layer very fast. As a matter of fact, it's even more effective than the CFCs and um, something like 30% of the entire nitrogen oxide in the atmosphere is the result of various human activity, but mostly actually agriculture. So most of the ozone layer loss is due to agricultural activity um, around our planet, not so much other things. And so there's quite a lot of things we have to reform because if we keep losing ozone layer, it's essentially going to be ultimate end to everything on Earth. Uh, all the plants will start dying, or various uh, life around the planet will not be able to survive. Sudden increase in ultraviolet radiation, and it's going to create a ha huge hazard for us. But if we are actually able to control these various chemical elements, uh, it's estimated that by about mid 21st century, so like 2050s or so, we might be able to gradually recover the layer and not have as many ozone holes around the world. Uh, so this kind of tool allows you to explore these uh, various dates and you can actually even go back in time to, I think 2005 is the earliest. Yeah, there we go. March, 2005, that's when the Aura um, mission was launched. And you can kind of check it out and see uh, the differences in ozone layer compared to obviously today. Now, the differences are actually not as dramatic, but you definitely detect them because the ozone layer has changed and will be changing pretty much every year and there is unfortunately no um, artificial way for us to produce it and oh okay no that's not true there is an artificial way to produce it but there is no artificial way to introduce it into the stratosphere where it's located and so for that reason we have to actually be very careful with uh, what we release into the atmosphere and well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to show you this uh, simulation and give you an idea of what, what ozone is and how it's produced and how it's made. And most importantly, what we as humans need to be aware of in terms of keeping our atmosphere relatively healthy. So uh, hopefully in the next few years, we'll actually learn more about ozone and various um, compounds that are responsible for creating the actual holes that you see right here. But uh, for now, we can only speculate and continuously observe using missions like the Aura mission, because losing the ozone layer would actually be very, very dangerous. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it. Check out Eyes on the Earth, and also check out uh, various other simulations I use in my um, videos. And most importantly, subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who wants to learn through video games and simulations, and who wants to learn science and space sciences. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye bye. And so this is what it all looked like back in 2005, as you can see. Slightly more ozone going around. Although maybe not so much in the southern hemisphere, but definitely a little bit more in the northern hemisphere. Well, that's maybe not a good sign, because that means that it's also decreased uh, in the last 12 years.